I'd like to welcome everyone today. This microphone's not loud enough. Hello, I can't hear the microphone. Well, I can kind of hear it, but it's not long. It's not loud enough for child speakers. Yeah, that's going to be better. I think that's better. Hi, everyone. Here we go.
All right, I know it's kind of exciting. We have, we have an uh, assembly before January, February. So we're excited to start out the school year with um, how the West was won. As you think about where we're located in Wyoming, we're in the West. And um, so, this, you're gonna, so those that haven't seen this performance, you're gonna learn how the West was really won. Okay, good luck fourth graders, here we go. for you, Miss Martha. My Uncle Ned brought it with him from out west. Thanks, Santa. Is there something else? No, ma'am. Uh, yes, ma'am. Miss Martha, can I stay and hear your letter? I never saw a letter from out west before. Oh, for goodness sakes, yes. It's from my friend Eliza Spaulding. Sit down and we'll see what she has to say. May 10, 1836. May? June, July, August, September, October, November, December. It's taken six months for this to get here. We're somewhere along the Oregon Trail, I'm not sure where, we met another couple, Mr. and Mrs. Whitman in Independence, Missouri. We bought supplies there from a Mr. Harvey Young. Mr. Young is a black man who owns one of the biggest wagon facilities in this part of the country. He told us what we need. We bought a wagon, 25 horses, and mules. Horses and mules? Oh my. Nine healing heifers, four milk cows, 160 pounds of flour, 70... 57 pounds of rice, 25 pounds of sugar, and a little salt and pepper. We'll eat mostly buffalo we meat we kill along the way. Buffalo meat, poor Eliza. Although it's May, it's cold in the, at this altitude. Water freezes in the buckets. We break camp at 6 o'clock, and we cover about 25 miles a day. It rains a lot, and everything in our tent is wet. There isn't much fuel, so we burn prairie coal. Now, maybe I ought to explain that we think fuel shortages are new. Well, they aren't. The lack of wood forces the settlers to burn what Eliza Palata calls prairie coal. Well, actually, it's buffalo poop. 
Now that's a fuel shortage. It's hard to make people back in the States understand the West for one thing. It's too big. I mean, while Dave, Dave Crockett and Jim Bowie are fighting Santa Ann in the Alamo in the Southwest, while I'm fighting snowstorms in the Northwest. You got snowstorms, we've got dirt. Living in a sod house, there's dirt everywhere. Dirt's always falling from the ceiling. I have to cook with an umbrella over my pots to keep the dirt out. You think salt houses are bad? You should try living in a desert on the side of a hill. There's not just dirt falling through the ceiling, there's dirt, cows, wagons, and anything else that happens to wander onto the roof. Don't freak back. The snakes are calling in through their walls and the dust dumps and the prairie fires and the insects and the wind that never stops blowing. to your partner, bow to your corner, all join hands and circle to the left, and circle to the right, square your sets, you look at a sight. Don't sit through your corner. Don't sit through your partner. We see you lay into sashay when slow. Balance to you, partner. Then back. Let's go. Both swing your corner, giving it your all. Also swing your own. Be careful now, you'll fall. Give a circle left to the right hand, start we call.
to your partner, and to your corner to nail to your people because you all are doomed. Now don't let anybody tell you we didn't have fun. Now let's see, what was I talking about? You're supposed to be telling them how the West was really one? Oh yes, well why isn't her husband went West in 1836? They packed their weddings just for tools, foods, necessary things. Now matter how little space is left, every time you want to back home. For about the next 12 years, things were kind of predictable. Pioneers cable came and settled and so forth. Somebody in 48, can't remember who, invented chewing gum, but that didn't have much effect on the whist. But 48, James Marshall discovered... And the West was never the same again. Might near everybody got a severe case of gold fever. Joe Watson was this fellow's name, 
and oh how he wanted gold. He left his farm and all he had to go and search for gold. He panned the river, worked the mine. Each day he thought he surely find the riches that had been foretold. The fortune men called gold. The years went by, but Joe stayed on and searched in vain for gold. He lost his home and lost his wife, but still he wanted gold. His youth was spent, his money too, and then one day his dream came true. He found more wealth than he could hold. He found a vein of gold. Real gold. Solid gold. Old Joe was rich on the day he died. His coffin gleamed with gold. And people came from everywhere, this miner to behold. Some folks say, you still can see, oh, out mining desperately, there is no peace within his soul. He has to search for gold. Not me. I never got gold fever. Too smart. Name's Arizona Mary. I'm a bullwhacker. Know what that is? I got seats in Austin. Hitch the 20 supply wagons. I, I've carried supplies to every two-bit mining camp in California. Why, I... True to her profession, Mary had one of the most colorful vocabularies in the West. Her screaming profanities at those 16 oxen was as close as the century ever got to an 18-wheeler and a CB radio. I know them all. Men and women striking rich for a minute and then being dead broke the necks. Stick to oxen. That's my advice. That's my advice. Anna, give me that letter. Yes, Mama. You could start reading here. I already read the rest. Gold has really changed California. We moved to San Francisco, and you should come and visit us. The, Butter the Butterfield Over Land Express has four stage coaches weekly between St. Louis and San Francisco. They run day and night and cover 100 miles in 24 hours. Oh, boy, where are we going? We aren't. Now listen. Things sure are moving faster than when I came out there 14 years ago. About the stagecoaches, you might prefer traveling in winter because I understand the stages are very dusty in summer. summer. On the other hand, they're very cold in winter. If Martha's smart, she'll wait until the railroads get to California. Message for Eliza Spang from New York. Must be for Martha. Oh, here's a letter. Dear Eliza, I've decided not to come to California right now. So many things are happening, I don't know where to start. The papers are full of the stories of a man called Moses who's, who is leading slaves out to the South to freedom on the Underground Railroad. There's no telling how many slaves he's freed, but there's a $40,000 reward up for him. 
They never caught Moses, probably because they were looking for a man, and Moses was a woman. Harriet Tubman, she was an escape. She was an escaped slave herself, and she helped free over 800 other slaves. She lived to be 93, and as far as I know, died quite peacefully. The book, Uncle Tom's Cabin, is by Harris Beecher Stowe. It's all, it's all about slavery, and it's causing a lot of upper. Everyone is taking sides in the slavery. Things and the feeling is there may be war. The slavery question didn't affect the West much. The wilderness had a way of making everyone equal. So in 1859, isn't war the, pe- the isn't war the people d- that in the West were shouting about it? It was. Silver, silver, there's silver in Nevada. Silver, yeah. That's right. They were at it again. This time, the Comstock load in Nevada. It was a gold darn scene you ever saw for two or three days. The miners didn't even know about silver. They were extracting the gold and throwing the rest away. Finally, someone took it to an assayer, and the word was out. There is silver in the Washoe County! stories about old Henry T.P. Comstock, old pancake we used to call him, and Virginia City. Boy, oh boy, that's the most famous mining town in the West. I think it's a museum to, today, but back then. I hate to interrupt you, but you need to get on how the West was really won. I think we're about up to 1860. Why don't you tell me about the Pony Express? I'll tell them, folks, with none like me and relays of horses, you can get your mail delivered all across the country in 10 days, provided you've got the $5 for half ounce to taste and send it there. Well, the rates are better today, but I can't say the service has improved much. The Pony Express only lasted but a couple of years, and then it was replaced by the telegraph. War, war, and fight up for something. War, war between the states. That was April 12, 1861. 
Four years later, the Telegraph carried the news that the war was over, and five days after that, the President Lincoln had, had been shot. In the four years, the Civil War lasted. We killed more Americans than our enemies killed in World War II. Sad, sad. But you know, it's kind of interesting. Because of that war, we got a song that lasted all these years. And it was sung by both sides. And ironically, it was written by both North and South. Julia Howe from Boston wrote the words, and William, and William Steffi from South Carolina wrote the music. I bet mean, you can see it right along with us. music of the West was written down. It was mostly all pass along and sing along. Cattle drafts created a stray phenomenon, then singing to cows. Jesse Chisholm. I'm tired of talking. You tell him. The Chisholm Trail was blazed by a Cherokee Indian named Jesse Chisholm. It was used to drive cattle from Texas, Abilene, Kansas. Cattle drives created another phenomenon, cattle rustling. And that introduced us to the bandit queen of the Southwest, Myra Bell Shirley, better known as Bell Star. Until she was finally shot in the back, she was a double-crossing horse thief of a woman. She was even reported to be the brains of the Jesse James gang. She was also... Hold it! Hold it. You've told them enough. Sit down. I'll take it from here. During the Civil War, lots of former slaves came west and signed on as cowboys on cattle drives. We drove cattle across 1,200 miles of dry country through Indian territory and farmland. And it was a toss-up who was the most hostile to us cowmen, the Indians or the farmers. The Indians had a right to be angry. The white man had brought nothing but trouble. The cattle drives were bad enough, but the burden of the railroad was a final blow. The history of those years comes to us like it came through the earlier settlers, through the women. The frontier women kept diaries, and the Indian women wove the history of their tribes into their blankets because they did not have written language. Yeah. 
flying horse and track our largest and barren and still the rest when we let go the sadness we The sun god is setting behind yonder hill. My life is written in scarlet and black. Well, how one event can be seen so differently. Yep, to the railroads, to the Indians, the railroads were the end of the way to life. To the men who built them, they were a great adventure. Don't forget about the race. The race? Oh yeah, the railroad was built by two companies. The Union Pacific laying track west from Nebraska and the Central Pacific laying track east from California. Now as they're fighting the snow and Indians and solid rock weren't enough, Two construction superintendents got to challenge each other to see which crew could lay the most track in one day. You remember those fellows' names? Sure, Jack Caseman headed the Union Pacific crew, and he bet Charlie Crocker $10,000 that his Central Pacific crew of Chinese and Irish workmen couldn't lay 10 miles of track in one day. So Charlie just took that bet.
of the Golden Spike in 1869, and then the country had its first transcontinental railroad line. Lots of things made the appearance for the first time in the 1860s, like nickels, for instance. Two nickels were good for a haircut and buying a dime novel. Look at this one, Hurricane Nell, the Queen of the Southern Lasso. But I bet that's not as good as Mount Kate. She fights a grizzly bear in that one. Those dime novels were about 5% truth and 95% exaggeration. But grown-ups were given the equal exaggerated view of the West from the Wild West shows that they were touring the East. The most famous one was... Mine! Buffalo Bill Cody Wild West Show! Yes, sir! Ladies and gentlemen, I will MF Cody guarantee that this is the only Wild West show featured at Dollar of Ohio. That famous sharpshooter and a cowgirl, Miss Annie Oakley! Bill always sounded like he was announcing something, even when he wasn't. By the way, you know how he got his name? Well, I'll tell you, the Union Pacific hired Cody to supply their crews with buffalo meat. And each month, he present the railroad with his buffalo bill! No, no, that's really the way it happened! Why don't you tell him about this? <laughs> Before the Civil War, four million cattle almost takes Texas territory, but a lot alone. But in 1874, it was Joseph Gladden Isaac Owen invented this barbed wire. It soon put an end to the wide open spaces of, of the West. But the country was getting close to being 100 years old, so guess some changes were to be expected. By 1876, there were 38 states. It was our centennial, and we gave ourselves one heck of a birthday party in Philadelphia.
It's a shame they couldn't have waited to hold the centennial in 1879. They could have lit the whole thing with my new Edison electric sunshine bulbs. Things are changing here in the West. I've joined the Women's Temperance Union. I know I'm nearly 70 years old, but I want to keep changing as new ideas come along. changing here in the East too. I joined the women's suffrage movement. I can't believe I'm nearly 70 years old, but thank goodness I can still change with times. Women changed as the country changed. Carry Nation and the Temperance Eagle moved east and brought, brought prohibition. Susan B. Anthony and the suffrage cause went west and Wyoming became the first state to give women the right to vote. That's the way the West was... And more or less, that's the way the West was really won. But you know, the story doesn't end there. Because I think there's always going to be a little bit of the West to be won. Somewhere. All right, how was that? Did you guys like that? I was going to say let's all go west, but we are west, so we can't do that. Uh, fourth grade, that was awesome. You made us proud. Um, you represented the west well, and it was amazing the work that you guys did for your performance. Thank you. Mrs. Linford, thank you for what you do for our music program in our school and for our kiddos. Um, Mr. George and our uh, cameras crews today, thank you.
thank you for helping out and um, making this available for those parents that can't make it and for grandparents to watch it. Um, Miss Becky, thanks for helping with the uh, backstage stuff. And the fourth grade team, Mrs. Vandrew, Mrs. Kopp, and Mrs. Martin. Thank you guys. Fourth grade, again, very nice job. Um, audience, our um, students, thank you. You guys were very respectful today during the assembly. Thank you for being such a great audience. Have a great day and have a great weekend. <laughs>